So they're out. She's being very protective of him. And he's being bad. He's a bad boy. He's well, running. Well, he's filling his oats. <laughs> yes, he is. But she's so protective. Where's that buzzard feather? That's yeah. in her mind. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what, they're pretty daggone smart. She wants to protect him so bad. That's so sweet. He's running around. Yeah, she loves him so much already. But anyway, let's, let's talk about some facts and figures about black vultures versus turkey vultures. It's the black vultures that are the, are the bad guys here. And they're not native here. They've come and they're in, not correct? Native. So I'm going to sit down and read you a few facts and figures and tell you some of the things you can do to control this. And we'll also show you some pictures of black versus turkey vultures to see the difference between the two. All right, I switched areas so I wouldn't get run over by frolicking cows and calves. Now let's talk about problems with vultures. This is put out by the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. There are two types of vultures in Kentucky, black vultures and the turkey vulture. Turkey vultures are pretty common. They have the red head. Turkey vultures don't take live prey. They feed on animals that are already deceased. The black vulture was fairly rare. And I remember starting to see them come in several years ago and I thought, wow, that's different looking. Black vultures will feed on live prey, usually newborn or sick and dying animals. Predation on livestock by black vultures is not common, but has been increasing in recent years. If this continues to happen, or if it does happen and you want to try to take care of it, landowners can apply for a permit to reduce the black vulture population on their farm. And the permit is issued by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to contact them, it's 502-254-1592. 502-254-1592. Please take photos of the damage. It's illegal to kill them without the permit, but you can harass them away by shooting off fireworks, spraying them with a hose, using loud noises. Let them know they're not welcome, and hopefully they'll go away. There's just a little information there from the great folks at Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife. And again, I talked to Karen Waldrop, and Sunny Carr the other day, so I thank them for their information. I can't believe how much she's eaten. I mean, she is enjoying the grass. You were hearing her, the feeding noises. And the baby it, is sticking right with her. <laughs> you know what, she's so happy to be out of there, but yeah. they, they needed that bonding period to get together. Right. And I mean, look, it's, it's worked so well. And you know, this is part of farming. You talk about farm to table. Yeah. Something else that's farm to table, we got bees, mm -hmm. okay? I was a little worried about my bees, but I had to dance come down and take a look at them. I'll give you a hint. Two of them are kind of okay. The other one didn't make it. Good problems. Lots of people lose a hive or two or three or six, depending that's on how right. many they keep through the winter. But interesting stuff, farm to table, bees to honey. I like honey. To belly. That's right. <laughs> We're doing as much as we can right here, but uh, we're gonna get some help from the dance.